This is part two of my review of the Atari 2600 emulator called Stella and what I'm going to be looking at specifically is the how to configure your gamepad or your game controller so you don't have to try to use your keyboard. So uh, the first thing I'm going to look at is on the uh, on the web page here you'll see coming here where it says user's guide and the one thing I've already seen that I like about this simulator is it does have a complete user's guide that's very thorough so what we're going to do is come over here and you can it's, you can scroll all the way down or you can just find something you want and it'll take you right to it so we're going to go to keyboard layout I'm going to click on that and if you don't have a game pad or a game controller uh, you can use this here and it will tell you what keys on your keyboard does what so you can play and this you can kinda scroll down here and look but let's just say that you do so I'm gonna minimize that and the first thing you might want to do uh, is go into your control panel and go under game controllers and make sure that it's everything is uh, that your computer recognizes your gamepad and you might want to come over here to advanced and where it says select the device you want to use with older programs make sure that you have uh, the gamepad this whatever particular one you're using uh, here because it may not recognize it I'm not sure if if this you know if it counts as an older program or what but anyway just make sure that you have this uh, whatever game controller you're using have it under here and just check that as a precaution so after you do that uh, we're going to open up the emulator and what I'm going to go to is options then I'm going to go in here to input settings and under this tab here emulator events uh, these are all the things here that um, all of your um, these are all the controls so what I'm going to do is once you have your your keypad or your game controller in hand and also when you have your game controller you might want to get one that's got um, you know six or eight buttons on it like uh, mine has is has four like an A B C and D button on the right and then two on the top right side and two on the uh, the left side it's got four five six seven eight uh, about eight different buttons not including the uh, your left and your left and right up and down buttons so anyway uh, because the more buttons you have the more you can actually use because there's things on here like pause and quit and there's a couple other things that you can set uh, that will uh, when you push the buttons on your controller will do whatever you want it to do here so anyway uh, for select what you're gonna do is click on select this is highlighted and then click on map and then right here in the red where it says select action for select event you're gonna whatever button you want to use on your gamepad is what you're gonna press and I think select on most ones is the uh, I'm just gonna hit that is right beside what would normally be the start button and once you do it you'll see the action here this right here is saying what it is on your uh, gamepad so you know and that's how you know it actually if, if you try to do this and nothing happens then you'll know there's a problem that the emulator is not uh, it is can't find uh, your gamepad it doesn't recognize your gamepad uh, so I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna click on pause and I'm gonna hit map again and I'm gonna choose a button for that and then I'm going to go down to right here joystick up I'm going to click on that 
click on map and I'm gonna push the up uh, the up button on my game pad I do that click map hit down for down left and then right and then uh, a fire button because generally I mean there's on these Atari's you only have like one fire button you know, uh, so whatever button you, is going to be easiest for you to use, or what you're comfortable with, is probably what you're going to be your fire button. So I'm going to hit that, and then choose a fire button. And I've also found that when you do these here, the PO joystick up, and I'm not sure what that stands for, but come down here where it says P1, I'm assuming, I guess that means player 1, and I guess that would actually be player 0 or something. It doesn't hurt to do the same thing to these. Player one joystick up, map, and then press up. So you might want to do that for these here, for the player one, up through fire, and then I guess player zero up through fire. And once you do that, you can, and then you can actually come back up. And if you have any extra um, buttons that you want to configure, you can. Uh, it, there's a quit whatever if you want to set a specific button just to quit uh, or enter options menu uh, that would probably be a good one to use I'm gonna select something for that and then once you get this get all your buttons configured the way you want you can click on your game and make sure I have and and another tricky thing is actually trying to remember what ones does what so let me see if I've got them configured yeah and apparently <laughs> I don't so I'm trying to get this configured properly okay there's the pause now what well I tell you what on some of these games you have to choose a reset so I'm gonna just I'm going to do that right quick. I'm going to reopen it. I just closed it out. I'm going to go back to options, input settings, and a reset. Click OK. And I'm hopefully going to try this again. There I go. play with your joystick so uh, yeah make sure that you because some do some games do and some don't so definitely make sure you choose a reset uh, select one of these resets for your controller otherwise <laughs> you won't hardly be able to play your game so that's basically it um, on configuring these con uh, using your game pads and remotes to uh, to play this emulator and I'm probably gonna have another one I'm not sure what I'm gonna do just yet so be looking out for a part three and that's it Take it easy.